Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Listen to this, if you want to know about people in the YouTube industry who have just been well and truly busted. Here you go. But with that being said, let's get into the business of boxing. And I love times like this because if you if you look at the boxing market, go back a year ago, people were laughing at the podcast market. Uh, who are these faceless people behind microphones saying whatever it is they want to say? Funny how when there's no boxing, all that's left standing is the podcast community. The guys who diligently create content because we've never needed the camera. We've never needed... All we do is come out here, talk about the things that you see just like we do, and we just give a different take on it. And it seems everyone's jumping on that now. You see IFL doing the, the telephone interviews and so forth. And I think they're beginning to realize it's not as easy as they thought it was. It's not just a, a chat between person A and person B. It's not. There's a lot of work that goes into cultivating those relationships, building those dynamics so that when you do hook up for a podcast episode, the work's already been done. And this is often forgotten. A lot of people choose to forget this because it's easy to say, I follow the daddies of content. But look. When there's no fights, what do they do? They come to where we are. They try and eat off our plate. I don't mind that because, you know, there's a reason why these guys aren't in front of the camera. They're colorless and characterless. And that doesn't mean that they're bad people. They're just not people you want to hear on a regular basis. The boxers, the promoters, the managers of the stars. So they can't do what we do. And I don't even think they want that level of accountability. So if you've looked at the content, it's been terrible. It's been garbage from top to bottom. It's been garbage. But what it's done, like the rest of the economy, this slowdown, this shutdown, has forced us to look at one thing. Who's really doing the numbers? We're going to lose a lot of pubs. We're going to lose a lot of restaurants. We're going to lose a lot of street food vans. We're going to lose a lot of everything because a lot of people were running on margins somewhere between 5 and 7%. That means that they were only, make, they were only making 5% more than they were spending. No savings. No, there's no reserves. There's nothing for these businesses. And people say it's tragic that they're going to go under. And for the individuals concerned, absolutely. For the economy, no. Because when you're running at that margin, you're doing something wrong. And all this has done is it's, it's shown us who's been running businesses at low margins. And so hopefully after all of this, we'll have better run businesses. They, they'll grow into the market vacated by everyone else. But we should, have, we should have a better economy for it. I think every so often you need to prune... You know, the dead wood and then see what, what thrives and what rises. So I think you've got that with boxing media because now we can actually look and we can ask two things. What are the real numbers? And number two, what drives those numbers? Because I've talked about it. I did a podcast on what I call social media doping before. And I think, you know, I just want to touch on this point as a quick follow up. I don't want to labor it too much. But I just want to touch on this. If you roll back a year, you know, Dillian White interviews, right? Dillian White interviews. So that is, on IFL, that is Dillian White and Coogan Cassius. Those sorts of interviews were doing, what, 400,000 spins? And that was after a week. They'd, be doing, they'd do 400,000 after a week, and then they'd have, like, a relatively long tail and maybe top out at 550, 600K. Two people, Coogan, Dillian, talking about boxing. So, that should still hold true now. If, if the barrier to consuming IFL content was normally time, because the videos are so long, you just don't have enough hours in the day, you would imagine that giving boxing fans hours in the day, the number of views would go up. 
So I don't understand how after a week, the last interview with Coogan, Cassius, and Dillian White did about 68,000. When he did a flashback with one of his old Tyson Fury interviews, that was, that was probably about a week ago, that's 17,000. But they still want to tell you that boxing can do half a million to a million views of content. Fine. So my question then becomes, if it's about the interview, then the same two people interviewing should do roughly the same numbers because they're the fans of the franchise and the fans of the fighter, right? That's really all it is. I refuse to believe that people are that into Dillian that he's a crossover star. He's not. He's a, he's a star in the boxing market. So the numbers should be broadly similar, and they're not. Even Coogan's biggest name, Eddie Hearn, those numbers are down. Those numbers are down. Remember when we were talking about one million views at KSI Logan Paul 2, whatever the hell it was. And now we're back down into the 20s, the 30s, the 40s in terms of thousands. Where have those fans gone? Where have the IFL fans gone? You can't hear this excuse that no one's going to tune in because there's no boxing on. Um... It's still the same people talking about the same things. The format hasn't changed, apparently. So where's everyone gone? Where has everyone gone? How do you go from a million views to 50,000? And if you remember, those million views were happening in the space of like 24 to 36 hours. Now we're looking three days down the line and it's only 68,000 of Coogan talking to Eddie. And let's just say the majority of those are Eddie Hearn fans, so what franchise does Coogan carry? What what brand identity is he bringing into these conversations? It, you're starting to realize there's not much in this boxing media thing. There really isn't much. You know, you can talk about boxing social as well. Right, let's touch on that. So Boxing Social's three biggest videos are number one, Bazinga, after some YouTube fight. I don't know. I think it was the one in Miami, right? 1.1 million views. Andy Ruiz Sr., about 900,000 views. Andy Ruiz Sr. And then Big John Fury on about 600,000 views, right? They're Boxing Social's three biggest interviews. And... No disrespect to any of those guys, but they're not at the core of boxing. So, why have a boxing social got an Eddie Hearn interview that does 500,000? They've got a Dave Allen interview that does 500,000. But then, if you cross-reference that with where Dave Allen's at on IFL, currently, that's ten times what he's doing now. So where have all those fans gone? Where have all those Dave Allen fans? Because Dave Allen's not a crossover star. Where have all the Dave Allen fans gone? If you're doing 500 and something thousand a year ago, and then when Coogan, who's a bigger platform, puts you on, you're doing 30,000 in a few days. Where's that? Where have all the, where have the other half a million people gone? It's just simple mathematics. Look at what the, look at the numbers they're doing now. What, what are Boxing Social doing now? Actually, let's have a quick look. Right. So, the Boxing Social content currently consists of Eddie Hearn Instagram live videos. Right. With Andre, they did one thousand two hundred. With Danny Jacobs, one thousand two hundred. With Devin Haney, six hundred. With Danny Jacobs, one point three. So one thousand three hundred. Josh Taylor listing his top five fights in boxing, 550. Anthony Crawler talking about Scott Quigg, you know, 500. This is in less than a day, so just to give you a sense of perspective, I will release this podcast, and within 24 hours, I should have passed 600. After a week, we're in the... The 12, 1300 range on this one, I'd imagine, because people need to find.
find time to listen and so forth. So it takes time for the numbers to build up. But these guys are doing insane numbers. These are not insane numbers. Just on Instagram, 2,700. Boxing socials talk with Addy. <laughs> Six hundred. Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce behind closed doors two days ago. Five thousand three hundred. Jamie Moore reveals Frank gives a fuck. Eight hundred and seventy-six. Adam Smith brutally honest on whatever. Four thousand four hundred. Eddie Hearn full Instagram take of ten thousand in three days. Can you see this now? This isn't real. All these little clips they do. Anthony Crawler, 900. Um, Angel Fernandez, 4,800. Tyson Fury doing a workout, 8,500. Best of boxing. <laughs> Best of boxing social, 1,400. Yeah. Jamie Moore breaks down Fury versus Joshua, 2,100. Uh, Boxing Social Live with Uncle T. Bar. Boxing Social with Lee Eaton, 333. <laughs> ben Davidson, six days ago, 1,000. Joshua Bartsey, 544. This is all a week ago. Can you... Right, point Terry's trying to make is this, right? For the last few years, he's been saying that Boxing Social and IFL have been buying views. Now, at first, I, I didn't know what to make of it, so we've got tech guys who, who do all our tech work. What they do, they, put, they do like them aubergines and they upload stuff and cutouts and stuff like that that I can't do because I'm thick. You know, I'm, I'm just a front man, I've got big balls, I front it out, I'm confrontational and I get in your face and I say it as it is, right? The rest of it, we have to pay for. I have people who deal with that, so I'm, I've been very fortunate, I've dropped on. But Terry's pointing out that these two here are cheating and they're not the only two, alright? Now, let me just tell you a little bit about Terry, shall I? He's a former fighter. He trains amateur fighters, right? So, he loves the sport. He's actually a merchant banker, right? I know this because I went to see him in Leeds when he was stopping over there doing, uh, like, a, like he stood in a room and he's addressing, like, loads of people and stuff like that, all suited and booted. And it's totally, I can explain it, it shocked me because... I've also seen him bouncing about with his uh, Tupac album and stopping in hotels and we've had loads of sessions on beer and stuff like that and he dresses in his urban uh, outfits that he wears and blah de blah <laughs> good luck to him in his boots and that but he's a 9 to 5 a guy works in the city earns more than 6 figures he's not a cabbage he works at Sheffield Uni he knows his stuff. The guy's like off the charts as regards brains. These people are not stupid. Now, Coogan, who is a very good interviewer, interviewer and so are Rob Tebber, what they've done, they've tried to get a few quid out of the game. Now, when you're blowing up numbers, you get sponsors on board, don't you? But now that there's... That it's the uncertainty in the market. The numbers have dropped, but yet everybody's sat in their house at home. So why are they not watching IFL? Why not? Because there's no boxing on. I'm not buying that. Terry's not buying that. Coogan, Rob Tebbert, you've got my phone number. You're more than welcome to come on my channel and address this. But the bullshit has to be called out. 
the bullshit has to be called out. It's been going on for too long, this little cult that's going on now. So that means that all them matchroom boxing interviews that Eddie Hearn's dealing with, all them views they get, they get, they're all bent as well, aren't they? Now, this does go on. Now, I spoke to people and I said, how's it work? So they said, this is how it works. I've actually had a sit down and people have showed me how it works. Now, you look at my channel, biggest video I've done is 15,000. So... <laughs> You know, it's hard work eventually will pay off. There's no shortcuts to success, right? None. Eventually you'll get found out. Now, you've just seen it. Now, all we've got on these channels at the moment is the same people interviewing the same old people. It's the same old carry on, isn't it? Furies, Joshua, Eddie, and Frank Warren, Billy Joe, blah de blah. And now they're putting compilations together, and like it's getting a bit embarrassing now. And it needs addressing uh, because these people have got access. It's not something I want because I'm more of a critic, aren't I? I'm more of a. I'll sit in front of the camera and call them out. If they've got a problem, they can get in touch. They're more than welcome to come on my channel and answer questions. We can arrange a time and I'll put it to you because I've been shown how this works. Now, Terry's nailed, nailed it there. Now, I, I was told £2,500 for a million views. So, he, Terry said 2200 did he? When I, I said, is that how it works? And they said, yeah. I said, well, fuck that. So, wh why would I want to... Why would you want to pay to do that? I mean... It's an hobby that stroke turning into a business, but these are trying to make it into a business. But I can now see why Rob Tebbett's not very well liked because everybody in the industry knows that he shafted Glenn McCrory. Because Glenn, Mc Glenn McCrory, what front man, money, uh, uh, boxing social. But what they all forget is this the porkster knocked boxing social back when it first started. I knocked them back. I actually went out with owner, Neil Kettleborough, who owned a magazine at the time. We went out for a curry, me, Liam Cameron, Dennis, Chris Smedley, Dave Allen, Glenn McCrory. We all went out for a curry, and uh, I knocked him back. I said, no, I don't think I could work the computers and all that, and I don't want to be traipsing around country with me, with me tongue hanging out of Eddie Hearn's arsehole because I'd end up attacking him one hand. Just, I'd take him down one and I'd probably bite his nose off or his ears. So, I, I can't do that. These people have to sit on the fence. They can't give an opinion. Coogan rung me two weeks ago. Yeah, I'll ring Dennis Hobson. I said, well, all you're doing is putting the same stuff on. Why aren't you ringing Dennis talking about a Juro sport deal? Yeah, I'll ring him, I'll ring him. He ain't fucking wrong, Dennis. Because he knows if he rings Dennis, he'll get in trouble off his paymasters, won't he? So I'll put the rest of it on for you. Of all the videos I've just mentioned, it's not 10% of the Bazinga video. I don't even know who Bazinga is. I don't know who Bazinga is. <laughs> I just don't. I really, really don't. But what you're seeing there is, and I, you can say, I don't like Rob Tebbett, I think he's a rodent, I think he's a scumbag, I think he's bad for boxing, I think he's an absolute disgrace. But take my opinion out. He's a good interviewer though, Terry. These numbers. Bazinga, 1.1 million. Jamie Moore, 953. Which number are you more likely to believe in terms of where boxing is at in 2020? Simple, right? Dave Allen a year ago doing 500,000 views and they tried to convince us this was real and I told people this isn't real. It's not real. Look, by way of comparison, Dave Allen does an Instagram live. I imagine this is with IFL or they've just taken this off Dave Allen's feed, right? And in one day he's done 15,000 views. And you can, you can assume that there's been boosting to these numbers. You know? But even then, they're not the numbers Dave was doing when we were talking about half a million. So it comes back to this question. When IFL give you numbers, what proportion of those numbers are people who will watch anything IFL put out? 
And then, what proportion of those are people that will watch anything Dave Allen does? And what proportion of guys that will get involved if it feels interesting? However you want to slice and dice it, you've lost half a million people. Where have they gone? Why have they left? It doesn't make any sense. So we're going through this period now. And if I'm sponsoring one of these channels, if I'm a Bet365 or a Betfred, I'm looking at these numbers, right? If I'm marketing at Betfred, I'm looking at these numbers and I'm saying to myself, where's the half a million views? Like, what am I sponsoring these guys for? They can't deliver the numbers I need because they realize outside of the Joshua's, the Furies, boxing's not that big. No one cares what Jamie Moore thinks about anything. No one cares what Adney Crawler thinks about anything. Adney Crawler can walk through London and not many people know who the hell he is and he's fought on a pay-per-view. Let that sink in for a second. These guys have been conning you for a long time. A lot of people are on their ass licking these, these video donkeys and you want their life. You want to traipse around the country interviewing boxers, being around boxers, being on the inside. But let me just let you in on a little secret. There's no money in it. I don't think Boxing Social have filed their accounts for the last 12 months, but that'll be coming soon. To 12 months before that, if they even cleared 32 grand, they'd have done well. So Rob Tebbett's there trying to clear 32 grand in a company he doesn't even own. Has he licensed the Boxing Social name? Maybe, and that's why, maybe that's what they're accounting for. But rest assured, it's not enough to make a living. Without the sponsorship, these things are massively loss making. And this current death of boxing means that they can't con you anymore. Because if I felt such a strong brand, they should be able to carry any kind of content without losing numbers. If the people I felt interview are such big stars, they should still be able to carry the franchise. And the reality is that they don't. So, next time you see these guys on social media, just check. Check the numbers they're doing. It's all, it's all been manipulated in a way that's disgraceful. And it's essentially just a bunch of forum jockeys, you know, bench players at best, substitutes at best, squad players. Like... That's what these people are with their fucking little cameras and their silly little microphones asking really banal questions because they can't get under the skin of anything. And boxing fans lap this up as if it's important. It's not important. And that's what we found out over these last two weeks. The rodent's not that important. Cougar's not that important. Eddie's not even that important. You know what is important? Keeping our jobs. You know what is important? Our elderly survive in this crisis. That's what's important. So next time you see these guys and they're trying to lord it over you, remember these motherfuckers are living hand to mouth. Coogan will do a lot better out of it than everyone else, but Rob Tebb will be living hand to mouth. It's a bit harsh, Terry. He's a failed actor. The guy just doesn't understand how to be good at anything. But take my opinion out of it again. Just go and look at the numbers. Bazinga. <laughs> 1. 1.1 1 million. Uh, Jamie Moore, 953 or whatever it was. <laughs> Nothing explains the range. Nothing alive explains that range. Nothing explains why Josh Taylor talking about his fights. Josh Taylor, pound for pound. Josh Taylor, uh, about to be undisputed at Light Walter. Talking about his five biggest fights and. 549 views. No marketing budget. These guys don't even push the product. It's... Ah, I'm done talking about it. You gotta look at it and make of it what you will. Just know that this boxing thing is not a way to make a living. Do you know how irony is? I'm 20-something minutes in. I hadn't planned to talk about it for that long. But I want... It was something we had to address because... 
if we do nothing in 2020, let's at least strip the fakers out. Let's just at least strip the bullshit out of the sport and let's just call people on their bullshit. These media platforms have been buying numbers. And I know what people are going to say. How does he know? Let me just let you in on a little fact. Based on YouTube monetization, if I bought a million views on YouTube, and YouTube accepted all of those million views without questioning them, right? Based on the monetization, I can make 300 quid every time I do that. So I spend about 2,200 on a million views, and maybe depending on what level YouTube puts me at, maybe I could pull back somewhere between two and a half and three grand back. Now you add in the sponsorship money on top of that. I can just about eke out a living blagging that I'm important in the sport of boxing. So this is on YouTube. Don't create incentives for people to jimmy up the numbers. Because that's what happens here. If I can see a 300 quid spread, I'm like, give me two and a half grand. I'll do this now. But is it worth damaging your brand, your reputation, your image for the sake of 300 quid? No, and it was cruelly exposed. Like, how? How is this thing? Hold on. I actually, I'm, while I talk, I'm actually going to Google who the hell Bazinga is because I have zero idea who the hell Bazinga is. And that's that's embarrassing on my part. Maybe I'm just not part of the cultural zeitgeist. So Bazinga's not his name. Ethan Lewis Payne. Born June 20th, 1995, better known as Bazinga or Bez, <laughs> is an English YouTuber and a member of the site. What is the site? Oh, Jesus. This guy did 1.1 million views on Boxing Social. Why wouldn't he just have that on his platform? If he's a YouTuber, why wouldn't he take those 1.1 million views and have it on his platform? That doesn't make any sense. Like, if if Boxing Social's franchise carries about 20,000 views, this guy's did 1.1 million. Why wouldn't you do it on your platform? It doesn't make... That doesn't make sense. You're the man with the power. It's like KSI Logan Paul. When they do their weigh-ins, it's on their platform. They always have the stuff on their platform because that's where they generate their money. So, am I meant to believe Bazinga's just given up two and a half grand to Rob Tebbett? for the sake of an interview, or whoever it was. Doesn't seem to make sense. But look, guys, draw your own conclusions. Apologies, right? This wasn't meant to just be a, a social media doping slash cheating episode. I'll come back with some more regular content. So make sure you listen to this one. Cause... Right, there you go. You just heard that from the man himself, right? If this is not true, Coogan... Rob Tebbert, and I know you're listening because I've sent you this podcast from Terry. If it's not true, come on my channel via the telephone and answer questions. Just like I want Dillian White to answer about the step aside money or Callum Smith and Joe Gallagher that were hushed up. Let's call these people out on the bullshit. Come on, channel. Come on, the channel. And said, Porky, you've got it wrong. Or, come on, channel, and said, Porky, I'm going to punch your lights out for putting that on your channel. Look, all I'm doing is just saying, look, keep it real, all right? Keep it real. Look at my channel. 2,803 subscribers. It's nothing, is it? But we're doing it properly, aren't we? Small strides. There's no shortcuts to success. All right? So peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Alright. Shout out to all them people that follow my channel. And thank you very much for liking and subscribing. And a shout out to all you haters as well. Cause you keep watching. Ha 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 ha. Tata. Oink oink. <laughs>